we're going to look at how we can use unit conversion to solve problems. First, we want to look at why we might want to convert units. There's a variety of reasons why we might want to use unit conversion, both in the class and in everyday life. Unit conversion allows us to more accurately determine what dose we might need of a medication. It can also allow us to do comparisons uh, so we don't try and compare completely different units. We convert values to the same unit so we can compare them. And it's variety, it's useful in a variety of contexts. We want to look at how we do unit conversion. And this is actually a common problem solving technique I'm going to use throughout the course is first we need to identify what information do we actually have from the problem? What do we need? Or so what, what are we looking for? Where are we trying to go? This is somewhat like if you're trying to go on a trip, it helps to know where you're starting and where you're going to finish. Finally, you need to connect these two. What steps do we need to do to get from where we're, the information that we know to what we want to know? Are we going to have to get additional equivalencies? Are we going to have to get additional materials or information? What get information do we need to gather? And can we actually get from here to there in one step, or is it going to require multiple steps? So for example, if a patient is, prescri is prescribed a 200 milligrams of a medication, how much of the, is the prescription in grams? We want to state by start by stating the given and needed quantity. So what we know is that we have 200 milligrams. We know that we want to get our units in grams. So we want to find out what the value is in grams. We want to create a plan to convert from our milligrams to grams. So to do that, we can convert directly from milligrams to grams. If we look back at our equivalencies, we already know how many milligrams equals how many grams. So for our third step, we want to have an equivalence between milligrams and grams. One milligram is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative third grams. Whenever I create an equality, I can use that as a basis of two different conversion factors. Remember, I'm going to divide both sides by 1 milligram here. 1 milligram over 1 milligram gives us 1. So here is one of our two conversion factors. The other conversion factor, I divide both sides by 1 times 10 to the negative third grams. This is going to give me the value of 1. It's my conversion factor. So now I have two different conversion factors from the same equality. I need to figure out which one I'm going to use. So remember, we have set up this at the beginning, 200 milligrams. We want to get to grams. So we're going to have to multiply by a fraction. So this is our dimensional analysis that we've looked at previously. I'm going to put my original value over 1 so that I can line up my fractions appropriately. And now I need to figure out which of my two conversion factors needs to go into this space. I want to get rid of milligrams, so I'm going to need to make sure that milligrams is on the bottom of this fraction. If I look at my two conversion factors, the one with milligrams at the bottom is this one right here. So I can put 1 times 10 to the negative third grams over 1 milligram. I can multiply through and I get 0 0.2 
grams. Now you may wonder what happened to those zeros. Remember, this is a significant figure, the two is a significant figure. These zeros are placeholder zeros, so they go away. Uh, so they, they won't be on our final answer. Do you want to make sure and review your significant figure pro problems for additional examples? Here's another example. We have a rattlesnake is 2.44 meters long. How many centimeters long is the snake? So we know it's 2.44 meters, and we want to know our value in centimeters. To be able to get from meters to centimeters, we need a relationship between meters and centimeters. Centi is the compound unit, so we put the number one in front of this. Meters, it's going to be 10 to the negative second meters. It's 10 to the negative second is equal to centi. The meter stays constant throughout. Put this over one. We want to multiply by a fraction. We want to have our 10 to the negative second meters on the bottom, our one centimeter on the top here. Our meters are going to cancel out. We'll be left with units of centimeters. If we multiply through, we have 244 centimeters. Do make sure that you are lining up that we have 2.44 times 1 on the top, and we have 1 times 10 to the negative second on the bottom of your fraction. If you're not coming up with 244 centimeters, then this can sometimes be the issue. So do make sure that you have everything lined up. You're multiplying the top by the top, bottom by the bottom, and then divide those two values.